obviously uh, their game plan was excellent. They came out hitting on all cylinders, shocked us early. Um, give our kids a lot of credit and our, our home crowd was tremendous tonight, best of the year. Um, we've been spoiling them a little bit. They got a game tonight, so, um, but they were huge. Big six man, big six man tonight from the crowd. Um, but uh, whenever you can uh, weather a storm like we did tonight at the shot making that they were putting on, the exhibition that they were putting on for a while, uh, Corey Davis and Armani Brooks, uh, you got to feel fortunate. But uh, once we stopped turning the ball over, the game changed. You know, and we won this game. Uh, obviously, uh, we second half we held them 35 percent, but uh, they were still hard to defend. They're really, really hard to play defense against. But uh, you know, the question I've had for this team all year is, you know, when 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 the time comes, the moment of truth comes, are we going to be able to take our game to another level? Uh, and I thought we did that tonight. And that's why it's where we would have gotten beat. So it was interesting, you know, for me as a bystander, you know, coaching them through it, you know, are we going to be able to play better and when we need to play better? Are we going to, guys going to be able to step up and make the plays, put the ball in the basket, take care of the ball, get the points we needed to get? So we weren't going to win tonight with 65, not, the, not, not against this team, the way they made shots. You mentioned the turnovers. You only had one in the second half. I think we only had one in the last 30 minutes. So we had right around there on the eight minute mark, we already had eight. So how is that possible? I mean, how, how can that change so? It's amazing. <laughs> if I knew the answer to that, I'd never lose a game. Is it just concentration? Uh, I think I would tell you this. Their defensive physicality and their uh, attacking of the ball shocked us early. We were not prepared for it. I think our guys were a definite shock uh, of their aggressiveness and their physicality. So I, so I say, and then, you know, the mark of a good team is when the game's being played a certain way. Look, they had, th they, had they let a guy, they, whoever was playing, they had three guys play the five spot. They all split minutes. They had 14 fouls between them. So I think it was a great game plan by them. You know, just sacrifice, just, 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 they were not going to get pushed around. They were going to try to be extremely physical. And I think that was, that's my opinion of what, what, what I saw and what the game plan was. Um, all the way up until Gary Clark getting slapped in the face with a minute to play with the whistle. Uh, but our guys, give our guys credit. They stepped up and they adjusted to what was going on. You've had a more difficult 10 point win. <laughs> Yeah, this, it just felt like a one-point win, let's all be honest, if you were there tonight. Uh, no, I don't think so. Right now, I can't, I can't think, but uh, I would say probably not. Mick, you did a really good hey, job. Bruce. Good to see you. Robbie Gray le yep. leads the league in scoring. You did a really good job in the first half, even though they got 40, he gets one yeah. field goal and finishes four for 15. Is that something you... Uh, we're looking to concentrate on going in. Well, yeah, no doubt. You know, if you, he, he, the thing with him is you can't let him get layups and free throws. He's a scorer of the Sean Kilpatrick mode more than he is a shooter. So with him, we do everything we can to try to not let him get layups and free throws, and not let him take the take take the ball on the dribble in low below the foul line. All obviously all the way to the rim, but just below the foul line where his pull up is devastating. So. Uh, we tried to commit to making sure he couldn't do that. It probably caused us to give a few shots up to other guys. Because, you know, when they play him at the point and they put Brooks and, and Davis on the wings and they're shooting the ball the way they shoot the ball. Was, and obviously then Devin Davis was lighting it up for a while as well. Kyle really stepped up in a crucial situation. I mean, Clark's Clark made shots. And, yeah, Clark, Clark picks up. Players win games, buddy. You know, players win games. That's why I tell you, you know, so it, what I was talking about earlier, you, you know, people say, well, how good are you? Well, you're as good as your players. You know, you can only coach them up so much. You know, the, the, the players won this game. They had to start putting the ball in the basket, taking care of the ball, dealing with Houston physicality, sharing the ball, putting the ball in the basket. Um, Jaron Cumberland getting fouled, you know, making some tough baskets, going to the basket. Obviously, Gary and Kyle making some big shots. Uh, which they were going to have to make because they're doubling the low post quite a bit, so it was hard to, for them guys to get in and going in the low post. 
But great teams have guys who can put the ball in the basket. You got to have them. You got to have answers. Where do you see them in this league? Houston? Yeah. Oh, I think, <laughs> I think they're as good as anybody. You know, I, I thought coming in they, they could have easily been 19-1 uh, coming in. Now, that being said, why would they lose a very close game at LSU, a very close game at Drexel? Um, and then they have the ice storm where they got to fly to Tulane two hours before the game. And Tulane hit some unbelievable shots on them. So why are they not 19-1 coming into tonight? I mean, you got to be fair. They got a lot of new players. You know, Brooks didn't play last year, although he was on the team. Corey Davis is a new guy. Devin Davis was hurt last year. He had plantar fasciitis. We were trying to recruit him. Great player from Indianapolis. So Zana wasn't on the team. Brady wasn't on the team. So Fabian White's. So they got a lot of new guys. So they're getting better. You know, not a shock. Their administration is extremely committed with their new facilities and everything, and they've been behind. So with, with, with Kelvin Sampson as the coach and the commitment their administration is pouring into basketball, they're only going to keep getting better. What do you like playing here? Great. We've won every game. Sounds good to me. You know, we don't, we don't even talk about where we play. We've never discussed it. We've never practiced here once. You know, I don't want to go Gene Hackman, but the dimensions are the same. <laughs> You said earlier, Mick, or at least posed the question, can we play better when we need to play better? Right. Did you learn anything about your team tonight in that vein, right. or just kind of validate what you suspected? No, I think you're always learning. I said this a while ago. You, you know, you're, I was going to be interested when, you know, when we played the, the four-game stretch, Xavier, Florida, Mississippi State, and UCLA, how, how we were going to handle that. And uh, I thought we got better each game. Now, obviously, we lost the first two, but um, we played an excellent basketball uh, against UCLA, and uh, we were never in doubt against Mississippi State, controlled that game. So we got, thought we got better each game, but uh, you never know as a coach. So if, I'm not going to say it validates because you just don't know, you know. All you can do is try to prepare uh, for the moment and make sure your guys don't hesitate like Trevor Moore did in that Memphis the other day when he had to make a big shot. You know, I thought our guys didn't hesitate when it was time to make big shots tonight. I think that, that's the mark of a, of a team. But that's only one night. You know, we still got to go back to Houston. I'm sure, you know, I, I'm sure they're going to be ready for, ready for us whenever that lovely trip takes place. <laughs> we might not see you before you go to uh, UConn. Could you, they're obviously not the same as the traditional UConn Teams, record-wise or otherwise, maybe. Did they play tonight? Not sure. Just, um, just yes. Yes. See, I don't know. First, first of all, UConn is injuries. So it's tough for me to say. I mean, Terry Larrier is their best player, or leading scorer, right there with Jalen Adams, one of their two best players. And he, he's been out. Some got hit in the face or something. They've had every possible weird injury you can have, from guys re-injuring re -injuring his shoulder, uh, Gilbert kid, they just had a lot of things happen to them. Um, all I know is they got good guard play, and we got to get ready to play. The UConn brand, that brand name, still means something to these players. Your players, you think? I hope so. The less motivating I have to do. <laughs> I hope so. I hope that they have the res the respect. That, look. Oh yeah, the, you know, the, a lot of these guys on this team last year know how hard UConn played against us in the conference tournament. Gary Clark has teeth knocked out. So you better expect them to play with a lot of pride. As long as Kevin's standing over there. I mean, they're gonna, they, they may not make shots or whatever, but they're going to play with a lot of pride. We better be here, just like Houston did tonight. You know, we have great, great coaches in this league. Tremendous coaching. Now, I don't know about other leagues, I know this. I mean, there's, a to Z in this league. There's great coaching in this league, which means guy teams are prepared. They're going to play hard. How many times since you've been here did you have a team with enough offense to come back the way this one did tonight? You know what? I was thinking about that, Doc. You know, I think in all fairness, uh, we've had some great teams. We were just in the Big East. We may not have the record we have right now. You know, the team we had that went to the Sweet 16. 
lost to, lost to Ohio State in the game we led in the second half. Uh, you know, the year before that, we lost in the last seconds to UConn and won a national title in the second round of the tournament. We had to play ranked teams all the time. So it's really hard, it's hard for me because of the change in leagues to really give that answer to you, which is probably why you're asking me, because it's hard for you. Because we're not, you know, it's, it's not the same as far as who you're playing every three days. But in all fairness, the, 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 we have some pretty good teams now. You know, especially in 11 and 12, I think. You know, to me, those teams, they were deep. We had size. We had multiple guys. Those teams beat a lot of ranked teams with Hall of Fame coaches. Won a lot of games on the road against ranked. You know, you, you, you know you're able to do that type of stuff. you got a really good team. So, and you can score to really – them. those teams, they, they had enough. They had, they, they, they had enough. Just, you know, the draw wasn't always on your side. You know, you could have used Ohio State getting upset that year. The draw wasn't on our side. We had to play UConn, national champs in the second round. So it's tough to say. Anything else? Thanks, guys.